Hi guys, it's Kelly from Cards by Christine here with you on a Technique Thursday to share with you the baby wipe technique. So, now if you follow Cards by Christine for any amount of time, you will absolutely recognize this. This is a technique that every single year I resurface. Um, I love fall and tis the season to reinvigorate this technique. Now, um, every year I show off usually um, a fall inspired stamp set and color scheme. It just speaks to me. But this technique can be used for any number of different themes or um, stamps. So keep that in mind. You could always use, um, you know, like a brighter color scheme and do flowers or a rainbow. Sorry, I love rainbows. <laughs> um, and show off some really beautiful stamping. So let me show you how to facilitate this look um, and hopefully you'll fall in love with it just as much as I do. So here we go. I've got basically the starter kit <laughs> for the baby wipe technique. So um, I brought in the stamp from Soft Seedlings. Um, so that's what we're going to be using. And then I have some baby wipes here. I have my largest acrylic block. Once you put your baby wipe out, ooh, let me see if I have an open set of baby wipes. me. Here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have um, a baby wipe and baby wipes or flushable wipes of any sort are um, lightly moistened and this is going to become your stamp pad. So you're actually going to be utilizing your re-inkers instead of a stamp pad. It's a great way to use those re-inkers. Re-inkers have so many uses beyond re-inking your stamp pads. So um, they're a great investment, especially at the low price point that they are. So I brought in Mango Melody, Crushed Curry, Cajun Craze, Real Red, Cherry Cobbler, and Mary Merlot. This is like autumn 101 right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop these ink drops onto this moistened towelette, which is going to create a place for you to stamp. Now I'm kind of just gauging out how big of an area I need to cover. I do every year I do this, um, I get reminded to be generous with my ink because if you don't ink it enough, you're not going to cover the stamp and you're gonna get a real patchy looking impression, which is obviously not what you're going for. So now you'll see here, I put the ink here and it's bleeding out. So that's how the ink is going to um, mix and create this beautiful one-of-a-kind texture but when I go in with another color it is important to get the ink source close enough together that you don't get those patchy sections so keep that in mind and we're just gonna keep filling in with our various ink colors there is absolutely no right or wrong way to do this um, but just slowly fill in all of the spots, roughly the size of the stamp that you're using. And this is Cajun Craze, so I'm going to be very generous with Cajun Craze because that is like the epitome of fall color. So I, our anniversary is today. I am actually pre-filming this. 
um, our anniversary seven years this year. And we went up north this past weekend um, to spend some time with the family. And oh, the fall colors were gorgeous. Like, I'm blown away with how beautiful the fall colors were. Except for in northern Wisconsin, it snowed. <laughs> So the weather was really crummy, which was sad. Um, we go to Manaqua and they have the cabin, my uncle's cabin that we stay at is on a walking trail. It is beautiful. Unfortunately, due to the weather, we didn't get the opportunity to go on it, which was a huge bummer. Obviously, we still had a great time, but um, it was really sad. So, okay, so now we're almost full here. Bringing in my last color, Mary Merlot. I'm thinking I might need to um, bring one more color to supplement in there because I don't want to have just a huge, very dark portion in the middle. So we'll add one drop of Mango Melody. Okay, at this point, you cannot tell what color originates where. It's starting to all blend together, which is great. That's going to help facilitate the look we're going for. Now, I'm going to bring in, <laughs> here's my, my piece of scrap paper. Okay, so what I want to do now Hover your stamp over. Make sure that your stamp pad, your area of ink, is large enough to color cover your stamp. What I have learned in doing this technique is you don't want to stamp up and down perfectly. It helps to mix the colors. If you put your stamp down, lift it up, rotate, and kind of shimmy around the area just a little bit. You don't need to um, move a ton, but that helps to marble the look. So you get that really varied look. Now, last week I used this stamp, um, this stamp, I'm like blanking, for a different project and we used a sponge dauber to fill in these areas. And I think what is going to help, um, I'm going to clean this off and try to work in collaboration with the baby wipe and a sponge dauber. Now, don't get me wrong, the coloring on this is gorgeous, but the inkiness in here is what I'm gonna try to fix a little bit. So, when you use the baby wipe technique, you technically don't need to clean your stamp between inkings because you're really going for that marbly look anyways, but because I'm gonna try a little bit of a different technique here because of the distinctive pattern of this stamp, I'm gonna clean it off just so that we get a better idea of whether or not this adaptation of the baby wipe technique is going to work or not. So let's go again. Okay, so now I'm going to flip this around we're gonna do the same thing so we're going to place it on the baby wipe wiggle it just a tiny little bit now before we stamp it down what I'm gonna do is bring my sponge dauber in and honestly towards the peaks it's looking good it's in this middle area so all I'm gonna do is bring my dauber in with no ink on it mind you and I'm just gonna push that ink that's already on the dauber into the stamp more. The only thing that I'm seeing might be a drawback to this, and we'll see as soon as we um, press it down, is I think we're going to muddy the colors more. So I have a feeling in the middle here, it's going to be pretty strongly one color instead of the nice marbly effect, but Look at how much better of an impression that you get compared to over here. So that is one of the drawbacks and beautiful things about the distinctive 
style of stamp. So it's made up of these tiny little dots. I'll see if I can even bring it a little closer. Tiny little dots that give it a variation in light and dark. But the closer the dots get together, the more, um, the more likely it is for the ink to just seep in there and create a muddy looking um, impression. So now I'm gonna try one more time. I need a new piece of scrap paper. I'm gonna try just to, actually I have an idea. Really push that ink in all over the stamp because I feel like that was a strong improvement. And now I just wanna see if I go ahead and do it around the whole thing. If we're going to see an improvement everywhere or if now we're just going to basically be spreading the darkest color, which of course, in this case are those red tones all right so now let's do this i know this doesn't fit perfectly which is fine just want to see what way it's going to fit the best Okay, so I'm going to cut them out just so that you guys can not be inundated with all of the my to-do list and the jobbers around the edge. So what I'm showing you with this first one is just the pure unaltered beauty of the baby wipe technique. Definitely worthy of commanding attention. However, with this soft seedling stamp and the distinctive stippling pattern that it's made up of, it does flood those pigments. So of course, you'll see the evolution as we go from one to the next. Main benefit to not using the dauber is that the colors are the most pure. So you get those nice light yellows that as you go down the spectrum, you notice are not as present. So that obviously comes from mixing the sponge dauber as you go. That is also why as I was going, I was um, tapping off, tapping the color off, obviously, unless you're using a new dauber every time, there's still gonna be some of that red pigment in there. Um, and that's why you get that mixing as you go. But the main drawback to not using the dauber is the fact that you have those flooded um, stippling patterns. If you are using a different stamp, you're not even going to have that issue because right off the bat, you're going to um, be using a more structured stamp that has more strong lines and you won't have to worry about it. So this is just more um, more of a factor with the stamp set that we're choosing. And that's why we're experimenting as we go. So the next one, I brought the dauber in where I knew the ink was the, the most <laughs> struggling and creating the, the muddiest part of our image. So that was just the middle. You'll still see along the edges, and I have actually ignored the helicopter in all of these. Along the edges, you're still getting that more variation in the coloration. But in the middle, you are starting to notice more of that red and dark orange mixing. Then the last one, I did go around the whole leaf and that's where you're seeing the most muted color palette, mostly reds. Um, now, that being played in mind as we're doing something like this, maybe knowing how the stamp set works, the next time I would ignore, I would maybe pull out the Mary Merlot and be less generous with the cherry cobbler in recognizing that we want more of the yellows and oranges to shine through. Maybe I'll do that next. Um, and then you do still get that very nice stamped image because we cleaned out some of the cells. Okay, so I'm gonna set those off to the side and then we're gonna try something else. Um, just for kicks and giggles, I kinda wanna do just the helicopter. I pulled it aside. Um, and we could do 
just a sentiment. Okay, let's see if I could set this up that it says hello with the little helicopter. And then we'll try a altered color scheme. So we'll do um, more yellows and oranges and less with the red tone. Although red in the trees is just so gorgeous. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my, I think this is a, oh, it's a C, my C black. Get that on there. Okay, so we're still using that same um, quote unquote stamp pad that we created. And now I'm going to lightly, no clue what colors were up there. It's looking like a lot of reds just off the bat. Um, but that's okay. And I just kind of daubed it around a little bit. Oh, look at that hello. So that's why I'm saying um, didn't need to bring a dauber in on that at all. Oh, I can't Let's see if that helps. Didn't need to bring a dauber in on that at all because it is just a line art. Um, and you get that great transition from um, probably Cherry Cobbler up to Crushed Curry and down to Mary Merlot on the O. So I love that. Of course, at the top, <laughs> when I flipped the stamp over, I could tell that I hit a patch of a lot of red to begin with, which is funny because that's what we're challenging. Um, so we've got the red tones going into the Cajun craze. I did sponge that, um, kind of lighten, soften that with the dauber. Now, this is a little messy. So you're gonna see this live as I transition to a slightly amended color scheme. So we're going to just discard the baby wipe. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in another baby wipe just to clean this black off. If I was done, I would just take this under the sink and wipe that, wash that all off. I probably could still do that. Um, but I'm just going to use another baby wipe. Just wipe this all off and start fresh. So we're going to want to let that dry just a little bit. Although probably very unnecessary. And what I'm also going to do is with that one that I just discarded slightly lift up the color off of our stamp before I put it onto my chamois. The less ink you put into your chamois, the longer um, you can use it without having to clean it out. So just a fun fact there. Okay, so now this should be mostly clean, but of course we're still just getting a little bit of that color out of the distinctive little wells that are in there. Okay, so this is unscripted. I was not planning on doing this, but um, I want you to be successful in doing this. So we're just gonna try something. Okay, I'm also going to switch to a new dauber now because I want to try to curb some of the red that we are fighting here. So brand new baby wipe. Okay, now same stamp. So same relative size that we're going with. And all I'm going to do is pull in my color palette. So this is the color palette that we used. I'm going to pull the Mary Merlot and I'm going to be heavier on the left side of the, the spectrum than the right. Okay, so that would mean starting with our Mango Melody. It's funny, some of these daubers squeeze easier than others, and some of them are just real challenging. Okay, so I'm gonna set up a really strong framework with the Mango Melody. And then I'm going to bring in moving up the spectrum. So next is going to be crushed curry. And I'm going to be much more um, intentional about filling in most of the area with the two yellows. And then I knew I was missing a color. I don't have pumpkin pie. 
So first of all, that would have helped a little bit because it would have brought one more lighter color in. So give me a second while I grab the pumpkin pie. Oh my goodness, I can't even believe it. So, throw some pumpkin pie on this situation. So I have a feeling we're gonna see a big difference, not only in our intentionality of how we inked it up, but also in the fact that we brought in that lighter orange that's gonna help with the gradient. Okay, so now we're at Cajun Craze. So now we're starting to bring the darker colors in, which is fine. There's still a definite part of the transition into fall. But I bet if you did the playback of the video, you would see this is a lot more filled in than our last one was already. And now we're finally just bringing red to the table. So a couple reds, and then now we've got our cherry cobbler. There's a couple points left to put our cherry cobbler in. And I do feel as though a couple spots that I'm gonna bring back mm -hmm. some pumpkin pie. Okay, it's a gamble. It's always a gamble how this is gonna turn out. So, let's see, did I cover my area? <laughs> Close, not quite, but I'll probably just go ahead and um, <laughs> wiggle more then. Okay, bringing in a new piece of cardstock. Okay, so. Go ahead, lay your stamp down, do a little wiggle. Oh my gosh. Okay, I can tell the difference already. Lots more um, variation. I can tell some of the edges of my helicopter didn't quite get hit and that's all because I didn't quite make my inking spot big enough. So we'll, we'll draw those out already. As we're going, we're going to be spreading that color already, which is good, um, but I'm hopeful that we're not muddying up the red too much. Okay, pull out, see we're already getting pretty red here. Ooh, I'm so excited. Okay, I think we just need to do this leaf yet. Or I should say this portion of the leaf. Whoa, <laughs> she's beautiful. And while we're at it, we're going to do this little guy as well. Okay, so now get my dauber as cleaned off as possible. And then do a light drag over this guy. Oh, I smudged a little bit. You'll see I didn't lift up completely perfectly on that hello. But look at how gorgeous <laughs> these impressions are. So let's compare. Where did I move my originals off to? Over here. Now, where you dip your stamp into is going to dictate your color scheme even a little more than this because, you know, if I was in a heavy red area, it would have pulled in more of those colors, but you can definitely still tell the variation in how we intentionally were lighter on this one than this one. Because if you were to do the same technique next to each other. So these are the ones that we experimented with on the side, 
versus that's the same technique we use there and that's the same technique we use there. You can definitely tell we're trending lighter over here. So <laughs> this technique, I just love it. Um, it's something that I do year after year after year and um, it, you always learn every year. I've I've filmed this technique at least three years in a row now. So, um, and every year you learn something new, you try something new. Um, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. I hope you love it. I'm sorry I don't have a card design to share with you, um, but you can absolutely tell how this would be the focal image of your design. So go ahead, stamp it. So like I'm envisioning, let's see here, this piece. Either I would have maybe made it a little longer to include the whole piece, but just put it on a mat, throw some ribbon, embellishments. You've got, a, you've got the main portion of your card just sitting right there just off of the stamp. Now, you can continually use this baby wipe, and I would say you can probably get a clean impression for 10, 15, maybe even 20 stamps. You will need to re-ink it though. And with how muddy it gets, you can't tell what color was where, it's going to be hard to re-ink on the same baby wipe. Baby wipes are very inexpensive. So I would, just like we cleaned up and swapped out for a different color palette, I would um, do that as well. I wouldn't Try to keep re-inking on this because you will automatically start to get a muddier looking image. So I hope you have a wonderful Technique Thursday. I hope you loved this baby wipe technique. Please, please, please um, share with me your comments um, and let me know. Have you ever used it? Um, if you do use it to create a, a um, card or a design or a project, we would love for you to share it. Um, I'd love to see what you made. And I hope you have a wonderful Technique Thursday and you